starting the video, please subscribe to our channel if you enjoy our videos. Thank you. Over 100 years after the most powerful explosion in documented history, researchers are still trying to figure out exactly what happened. On 30 June 1998, an explosion ripped through the air above a remote forest in Siberia, near the Podkamentaya Tungaska River. The fireball is believed to have been 50 to 100 meters wide. It depleted 2,000 square kilometers of the Taiga forest in the area, flattening about 80 million trees. The earth trembled. Windows marched in the nearest town over 60 kilometers away. Residents there even felt heat from the blast and some were blown off their feet. The crash was followed by a noise like stones falling from the sky. Fortunately, the area in which the massive explosion occurred was sparsely inhabited. This Tungaska event remains the most powerful of its kind recorded in history. It produced about 185 times more energy than the Hiroshima atomic bomb. Seismic rumbles were even observed as far away as the UK. And yet, over a hundred years later, researchers are still asking questions about what exactly took place on that fateful day. Many are convinced that it was an asteroid or comet that was responsible for the blast. But very few traces of this large extraterrestrial object have ever been found opening the way for more outlandish explanations for the explosion. Some suggested the Tungaska event could have been the result of Mater and any Mater colliding. When this happens, the particles annihilate and emit intense bursts of energy. Another proposal was that a nuclear explosion caused the blast. Russian researchers later said it was a comet, not a meteor, that caused the damage. Comets are largely made up of ice, not rock, like meteorites, so the absence of alien rock fragments would make more sense this way. The ice would have started to evaporate as it entered Earth's atmosphere and continued to do as it hit the ground. But that was not the end of the debate because the exact identity of the explosion was unclear, strange alternative theories soon started to appear. An even more outlandish suggestion was that an alien spaceship crashed at the site on its search for the fresh water of Lake Baikal. As you might expect, none of these theories stuck. Then, in 1958, expedition to the site Researchers discovered tiny remnants of silicate and magnetite in solid. Further analysis showed they were a high nickel, a known characteristic of meteoric rock. In 1973, a paper was published in the reputable journal Nature, suggesting that a black hole collided into Earth to cause the explosion. This was quickly disputed by others. In 2014, one team put a stop to much of the speculation of the earlier decades. Led by Viktor Kvasnitsa of the National Academy of Sciences of Ukraine, the researchers analyzed microscopic samples of rocks collected from the explosion site in 1978. The rocks had a meteoric origin. Crucially, the fragments they analyzed were recovered from a layer of pit dating back to 1908. Various gravitational interactions can make asteroids change their orbit more dramatically. The remnants had traces of a carbon mineral called londalist, which had a crystal structure almost like diamond. This particular mineral is known to from when a graphite containing structure such as meteor crashes into Earth. Most people think they come wailing in from outer space and leave a crater. 
First, the cosmic body entered our atmosphere at 52 30 km per second. Fortunately, our atmosphere is good at protecting us. The atmosphere will generally back rocks a few kilometers above the Earth's surface, producing an occasional shower of smaller rocks that, by the time they hit the ground, will be cold. In the case of Tunguska, the atomic meteor must have been extremely fragile, or the explosion so intense, it obliterated all its remnants 8 to 10 kilometers above Earth. This process explains the even second stage. The atmosphere vaporized the object into tiny pieces, while at the same time, intense kinetic energy also transformed it into heat. The intense heat resulted in shock waves that were felt for hundreds of kilometers. In other words, any remnants from weather entered Earth's atmosphere were turned into cosmic dust in the process. If events unfolded this way, it explains the lack of large chunks of cosmic material at the side. As the object entered our atmosphere and broke apart, the intense heat resulted in shock waves that were felt for hundreds of kilometers. But Tangaska's story is not over. Even now, some other researchers have proposed that we have been missing an obvious clue to explain the event. In 28, an Italian team suggested that a lake 8 km north northwest of the explosion's epicenter could be an impact crater. Lake Chekhov, they say, did not feature off any maps before the event. Luca Gasparino of the University of Bologna in Italy traveled to the lake in the late 1990s and says it's difficult to explain the origin of the lake in any other way. Despite heavy criticism of the theory, he still hopes someone will score the lake for remnants of meteoric origin. In 28, he and colleagues published a rebuttal to the theory, stating that unaffected major trees were close to the lake, which would have been obliterated if a large piece of rock had fallen close by. Regardless of the details, the influence of the Tungaska event is still felt. Research papers on the subject continue to be published. Today, astronomers also peer into the skies with powerful telescopes to look for signs that rocks with the potential to cause a similar event are heading our way and to assess the risk that they pose. When a Tungaska type event happens again, the overwhelming probability is that it will happen in our very near human population. We may never find out whether the Tungaska event was caused by a meteor or a comet. But in a way that does not matter. Either could have resulted in the intense cosmic disruption, which are still talking about over a century later.